Now, the second way a bank can make money is through this thing called the discount point. A discount point is kind of hard to understand, but it is in, it, it's a fee that is charged to the borrower to increase the interest rate or increase the return on the interest rate by making them pay it up front. And there are several ways to calculate it, which we're not going to go through, but basically it's the difference between what the investor, i.e. Jed Clampett, when he put his 300 million into the bank and said, I want 4% return, it's the difference between that and what the bank actually can loan the money out. Maybe the market says, well, we can only loan it at three and a half. Well, he wanted four, they're only getting three and a half. There's a difference there that may have to be made up in a discount point. Now, a discount point virtually is the same calculation as the loan origination fee. So if we go back to here, and let's look at this very first example where I didn't do that well enough. In this very first example, I told you we are borrowing $150,000. And there was one point loan origination fee. Loan origination fee. That's this math here. But let's also say the bank said, well, you know, there's actually also one discount point that we have to charge. How much are they going to pay in discount points? Well, you should quickly see that it's the same math. A point is 1%. It's 1% whether it's a loan origination point or it's 1% whether it's a discount point. It's still calculated the same way. So in this example, one discount point, let me write this in just to make sure we understand, is still 1% of the loan amount, so they would pay another $1,500 in discount points. So if the lender said, look, you want to borrow $150,000, we have to charge one point loan origination fee, and we're charging one point discount fee, they would pay $1,500 in loan origination, they would pay $1,500 in discount for a total of $3,000 in points because 1500 is one, 15 is the other. And we can play the game and do the same thing down here. Oh, in this particular example, we've got to charge half a point for discount points. Same math. I'm buying the house, different question, at 250 with a loan, 80% loan to value. So we figure the loan amount, which we did earlier. And then we figured the one point loan origination fee and realized it was $2,000. But the bank says, and we charge half a point for discount. We're going to know that that is half of the other. It's $1,000 in discount point. So in this example as well, they would still be paying $3,000 in points. 2000 in the loan origination points and 1000 in the discount points. This is the second way that banks can make money is through a discount point. Now, there's a third method and get this, that once again, this has to involve an attorney getting drunk because there's no other way any logical person would have thought of this. This is often called the prepayment penalty prepayment penalty right here. And you will hear the slang on this called the 3P or a P3. And that comes from prepayment penalty. This is a penalty that the bank charges the consumer for paying the loan off early. What? Yes, exactly. If you want to give them their money back early, they could bill you for that. It's a prepayment penalty. Now, I will tell you, currently in the current market, 
most prepayment penalty loans are gone. Um, and in some of the governmental loans we're going to talk about, they're actually illegal. Can't charge them, but some lenders do. That prepayment penalty works like this. Let's clear this out so we get a new screen. <clears throat> the prepayment penalty, or a P3, and here's how it's usually given to you. And we're going to use an example so that you can understand. They might tell you that the prepayment penalty is a 531. This is an example of what used to be a very common prepayment penalty. It's a 531 prepayment penalty. Now, there are several pieces of information that are given to you right here. The first thing that you should notice, or the first thing you notice, it is three years long. The penalty exists for three years. Because why? There are three numbers in this, a 531 prepayment penalty. If it was a 10-5 prepayment penalty, it is two years long because there are only two numbers. That is the first piece of information that you see. Now, I'm going to say this, I've never seen one, but you might have a 54321 prepayment penalty. That would be five years long because there are five numbers. The second piece of information tells you that if you prepay or give the money back inside of the first year, you pay a 5% penalty for doing that. So that $100,000 that you borrowed and you decide, let's say you borrow $100,000 yesterday. You go out to the casino today and you hit it big and you walk back into the bank and go, hey man, I don't really need to borrow your money now. Here's your $100,000 back. They're going to say, uh, 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 you had a 531 prepayment penalty. You actually owe us $105,000 back. You are being penalized for giving their money back because that lender knows that if you held that loan for 30 years, they're going to make $100,000. Remember back to that example I showed you of the note where it said the principal was 100, but the total repaid was 200, and it only said that they made 100,000 in interest. They don't want to lose that. So they're going to penalize you and say, you owe 105000 now. If something happens and you pay it back in the second year, you would owe 3% penalty. Why is the penalty lower in the second year? Because they have collected the interest for the first year already. Right? You didn't pay it off to the second year, which means you paid all the interest in the first year. So this year, it's only a lower penalty. So you may pay 3000 in penalty fees here. And then we can play this game even further. In the third year, you pay 1%. Why is it lower? Because in the third year, you've already paid two years of interest. So you may end up paying back $100, right? <laughs> How about $1,000? <laughs> Told you I was a numbers guy. You pay back $1,000. That's 1% 1 of this example that we were doing. You borrowed a hundred grand. First year, you'd pay back $5,000. Second year, you'd pay back $3,000. Third year, you'd pay back $1,000. And then the fourth year is what they call freely repayable. Now there's no penalty because it was only three years in length, right? And this second example here, this is two years. The first year, you would pay a 10% penalty. The second year, you would pay a 5% penalty. 
and the third year it is freely repayable. Okay, that is a prepayment penalty. So <clears throat> let's ask this. Is there an advantage to the prepayment penalty? Yes, typically lenders that used prepayment penalty knew they had you locked in. So what would happen is that you would see that interest rate on that loan could be anywhere from a quarter of a point to a half a point lower than the market rate. All right. So as an example, let's say the interest was 7% to the market. But if you got a 531 prepayment, your rate might only be six and three quarters percent because they've locked you in for three years right here. So you get an actual benefit because in this example, it's a quarter percent lower to get a prepayment penalty. So the question I ask you is, is this a good loan? The answer is definitely maybe. All right. You think that this is a problem with these penalties. Why would I want one alone with a penalty? Well, this all boils back to the fact that we talked about in chapter one when I said counseling your client might help you. So as an example, let's say your client says, I want to move in to the Ocala School District because it's the best school district in the state of Florida. Just making that up. Our son is six years old. We want him to graduate from the Ocala school system because it's the best in the state. What did your clients just tell you about this home they're looking for? What they told you was they are going to be in this house for 12 years, right? He's going to, they want him to graduate. He's now six. That means they're going to be in the house 12 years. If they are in the house 12 years, does the first three years of penalties scare them? The answer is no, it shouldn't. Now, do not raise your hand and go, oh, what if, what if they decide to move or change houses? Yes, things could happen. But what I'm telling you is, as a general rule, they're going to stay in this same house for 12 years. So this prepayment penalty doesn't really scare them. But look, if they get one, they get a lower interest rate, which may mean they save less money over the life of the loan because they are paying a lower interest rate than a market rate. So in this particular client, you may say, dude, this prepayment penalty is a 531, but you're going to live there 12 years, but we'll get a quarter percent reduction in the interest rate. Let's look at this loan. Now change the story. Suppose that an investor comes to you and says, I'm looking at buying a house. I want to buy this house and rehab it, and then I'm going to flip it back out on the market to make a profit. And you say, well, how long does that usually take you? Oh, well, I think I can do this in about six to eight months. Oh, this is a different scenario. If you buy the house and then resell it within six months, and your loan has this prepayment penalty, you are going to pay a penalty of 5%, which is going to eat into your profit. We probably should make sure we do not get a prepayment loan, but yet we're going to pay the higher interest rate. But a quarter point difference in a short time of six months may only be a hundred or a couple hundred dollars. So in this example, you would definitely tell your buyer, dude, we don't want a prepayment penalty. And this is a further example 
of how counseling your client when you go to help them buy may benefit in this particular example. You may hear one thing from one person and you may hear another from another type of buyer. That may influence what type of loan they are going to get because you certainly do not want to get a prepayment penalty for a short ownership, but it may not bother you for a longer ownership. The second document that you will sign is this security instrument. It is the mortgage. This is the pledge or the hypothecation. I guess I should have looked right there. It would have been spelled. I think I was pretty close. It is the collateral that you will actually give towards the IOU to protect the lender when they loan you money. It is a voluntary lien. Remember, you chose to do it. You don't have to have a mortgage. There's no law. You could pay cash. It's the simple fact that most of us don't. So we have to borrow money. That's the first document, the IOU or the financing instrument. And the second document is the mortgage. And I have stressed this. You are the mortgagor. Now, I know what you're thinking, that when you go to the closing, the mortgage is already printed out and typed and made for you. Yes, it is. But you actually sign it and give it to the bank. Therefore, you are the mortgage or, not the mortgagee. Make sure you understand those. And when we do that, there are two types of theories that lenders will use. 